welcome to another chat with, and this time we're talking to Alex Whittingham, Bristol Ground School. Uh, must have trained thousands of pilots in their theoretical knowledge exams over the years. So, uh, how are you doing, Alex? Hi, Ian. I'm doing very well, thank you. Jolly good. So, funny, funny old times. Funny times indeed. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm kind of guessing that from a from a flight training point of view. Um, the ground school and um, theoretical part of it must be one of the, the the least affected by the the current times. I think it depends on what sort of ground school you're doing. Um, the the big schools who do uh, full sit down classrooms uh, have basically had to send their students home, so it's been quite a radical change for them. But for Bristol ground school students, they're distance learning students anyway, so the change is is less. Uh, the major problem we've we've had, um, and it's small compared to other people's problems is that um, the exams have stopped and because the exams have stopped effectively everybody's progression through the system has stopped as well wow so so from an exam point of view if if i remember rightly there's a time limit between the time you take your first exam and you have to complete your last exam is that true yeah that's true there's an 18 month limit on that so it and given that people don't tend to do all 14 exams at one go there must be people in the system who've already taken their first batch of exams Yes, there are, and, and and that was one of their immediate concerns. Was um, what about this eighteen months time limit? It's not it's not a limit that people normally crash up against because if you're doing a sit down course, you get the whole thing done probably in six to seven months, something like that. Um, distance learning students typically take um, a year, 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 year and a quarter perhaps uh, to, to do the whole course. But a, a, as soon as you take out several months of exams, then it becomes a, a concern for people. Yes. So are there are there any moves that have been announced in order to uh, oh yes yeah most of the national authorities have uh, have autonomously uh, elected to extend the times and um, they, they vary between four months and six months the extensions but um, we're expecting that they're going to uh, eventually consolidate them and EASA are going to make some sort of ruling about that but typ typically a six month extension yeah and what, as I it, and it's, it's a while since i've read any regulation um, concerning this, if you do a distance learning course, you, then you you carry on and you do your distance learning at home, and you have some <clears throat> some progress tests, uh, etc. And then before, but there's nonetheless there's still a mandatory classroom element, a sort of brush up, or a... that's absolutely right. But there's a mandatory uh, ten percent of the course time has to be spent in the classroom, um, and ten percent actually isn't very much. Um, it's it's a six hundred and fifty hour course. So 65 hours is 10%, which works out, broadly speaking, to, to two five-day weeks um, in the classroom throughout the whole course. Um, and, and there are some people who just do the minimum, uh, but most uh, ATOs find that the minimum isn't really enough to get people up to speed. And uh, so we do a, a mandatory 15 days in the classroom, and we also offer um, extra weekend courses, or offered extra weekend courses, where people could come down and do a day of instruments or a day of navigation, something like that. So presumably, those those courses are currently not running, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, all classroom uh, work has stopped really because of the risks of uh, of transmitting this virus, uh, and it's particularly relevant for ground schools like us because we get students coming from all over the world. I mean, predominantly Europe, admittedly, but but certainly all over Europe and you know the Far East as well. So, I mean, we had we had a gentleman from uh, Singapore on the last course, but we managed to keep them running as long as we possibly could. But when it became clear that uh, there was a, a building crisis, we, we made an early decision and, um, and and canceled the courses for a couple of months so that people at least knew where they were. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing they're probably, it's probably a moot point anyway, because if you, if you come and do a, a week's course or a seven day course or 15 day course or whatever it is you do, then, then and, and you're ready, then you've got no, you can't actually go and take an exam anyway now, can you? Well, that is the problem, of course. Um, I mean, there are webinars, and we are working with webinars at the moment. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. But the, the UK CAA have, have told us of a process that you have to go through to get um, approval to use um, online training. But there is that ultimate question at the end. What is the point of giving people revision courses, which are normally just before the exams, when there are no exams to take? Um, so it's uh, it's a case of sort of finding our way in the market and seeing what we can do that's most value for our students really so presu presumably the um, come the day when the exams are re relaunched there's going to be quite a big demand for 
and yes. just to go and cram them yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I expect that um but it all very much depends on how the uh, the shutdown restrictions are eased and uh, at the moment we're expecting a sort of gradual easing um and it may well be that we get some notification from um, Austria Control and from the CAA that they'll be able to start an exam on, on such and such a day, even though we don't have full freedom of movement yet. Um, and under those circumstances, uh, then we could certainly produce uh, a web-based revision course, uh, which would probably not be a webinar in the true sense of the word. It's more likely to be a, um, a video of an instructor giving a revision course. So uh, it's gonna be whole days of work. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned Austria Control there. Um, mm -hmm. if, I, if I understand correctly, in that case, I think we spoke about this a while ago now. Um, I haven't had to, haven't spoken to you recently about it, but you are currently offering both CA and Austro Control uh, ground exams. Yes, um, it, it, it doesn't actually matter where your state of license issue is. Um, the way the European system works is you can go to any AASA country and you can do a, a rating um, or, or get an element of a license in that country. And the only restriction for ground exams is you have to do all of your exams with the same state. So um, you could, as a candidate, if you wanted to, you could stay with the UK. Um, or if you happened to be living, shall we say, in France, you could choose to have the UK as your state of license issue and take your exams in France or take them under another state's jurisdiction, um, perhaps in a different country. Uh, and it leads to quite an interesting um, shopping possibility where, where candidates are able to go to the exam provider of their choice. And uh, although we do our exams in the UK, we run our exams at, uh, at Clevedon, where the, the offices are, um, we do them both for the UK CAA and Austro Control come over and run exam sessions there. And I would say the majority of our candidates now are, are taking exams with Austro Control rather than the UK CAA. And is, is that a price thing or is that a... a uh, it's a, it's a combination of, of different factors. I mean, price is an issue. Um, the UK CAA set quite a high fee for their exams. Um, and I know why they do it. It's because of their funding model means that they have to be paid for completely by the users. Um, and the Austrians are, are correspondingly cheaper. Um, but it is actually quite expensive to run exams because it's not just the, the, the cost of the exam from Austro Control. You've also got to have the building. You've got to provide coffee for people. You've got to have a booking system. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so there is a price differential, but it, uh, it's not as, as huge as you might think. I think the Austrians are probably... Um, two thirds or something, or half to two thirds of the price of the UK CA. But there are other con considerations as well. The Austrians uh, will give you uh, immediate results. So you come out of an exam and they say, well done, you passed or you failed. Um, and that can be a plus to some people. Um, on the other hand, it can rather kick the rug out from under you. If you've got four or five exams to do and you fail the first one dismally, you're still thinking about that when you go into the second one. Uh, so you can see arguments on both sides there. Um, and the appeals procedure is is free uh, with Austria, uh, whereas the CAA, UK CAA charge, um, and it can be fairly quick as well uh, with Austria, whereas the, this UK CAA take a while. So there's, there's very much a difference in, in the way the exams are conducted. Um, the UK CAA is pretty old school, um, Austrians are a little bit sort of more modern and flexible. Yeah. Wow. And, and so in, in terms of people who are thinking of beginning their studies, they, then clearly the ground score is a great thing to sort of get out of, get out of the way and, and get done while the rest of the industry is, is is figuring itself out in terms of the airlines. It does make a certain amount of sense. I mean, particularly if people are at home and not working full time um, and you're looking around for something to do and you were going to be a uh, get start on your professional pilot training uh, at some point in the future, then um, provided you've got the basic qualification of a PPL, then you can start off on modular ground school um, and and while we've got time sitting at home get some of it out of the way uh, but there's always this issue of how far can you go and uh, the way that we run the course we run it in modules and the first module would take maybe three months or so to complete so as you say there's this when the lockdown reopens um, there's going to be a bit of a rush for exams um, but we we have capacity to do uh, revision courses uh, and we'll do our best to get people through the backlog as soon as we possibly can. Now, there's also a possibility that we might get web-based exams. Um, it's a capability that exists uh, obviously outside the aviation industry. It's not a difficult thing to do. And the software providers um, 
certainly uh, some of them, the one, the one that provides the UK CAA, advertise that they have the capability to do online exams, um, but it requires a, a decision from the UK CAA and from Austria Control to allow them. Um, and I, I, in fact, I spoke to the head of policy at the UK CAA, and he said, yeah, he said, I've got your request. Um, it's not that we're ignoring you, it's just that we've got lots of other stuff to deal with at the moment, and um, we have limited capability. So you're not, you're not forgotten, but the, the fate of people in, in ATPL theoretical ground school who can't take an exam is, is quite a long way down the list behind you know, getting medical supplies flown in, making sure the regulations are appropriate for you know, a, a sort of COVID-19 type of environment, and that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I kind of, it's, it's clearly at the top of some individual's priority list, yeah. understandably, if that's, but, but taking a bigger picture, it's, it's obviously uh, very- It basically important. said, bear with us. We, we know it's an issue, bear with us. But if it was something that they could introduce, then that would start to open up the, the, the taps again, and we could, um, we could do online revision courses for online exams, and people could start moving through uh, or keep moving through the system. But at the moment, it's all comparatively new and the decision-making processes are being used for other things. It is only 2020 and expecting web-based exams is, is a little bit advanced. I, I, I <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. the, the, the concept of, of web-based training is, is shocking as well. Um, it, it's it's something that is actually expressly allowed for distance learning schools, uh, but it's not allowed for people normally for people who are doing sit down courses. Um, so the people doing those sit down courses have, have had to go through a, a series of hoops to get exemptions, which have been issued fairly rapidly and, and fairly freely by the national authorities. Um, but it does raise questions about how the world would have changed post lockdown and whether there's an applica applicability of this sort of technology um, after the event. Um, and my feeling is there is, but there are all sorts of different questions because right now we can do, uh, I mean, I did a webinar yesterday on satellite navigation, a couple of hours on sat nav, middle of the day, um, and people seem very happy to, 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 to view it. Um, but could you do that in a normal working week? I mean, normally people, my, my students are at work. And so if we were gonna do webinars, then that's something that we'd have to run the evenings and weekends. Uh, and that in turn brings its own staffing problems. Uh, so we say there's an element of interactivity in your webinars, which would mean which would make it more difficult to just record them and, and distribute them later. It's a question, isn't it? Uh, one, one tries to get it, uh, some element of interact, uh, interactivity uh, with the with the webinars. Um, what we've found is that it tends to uh, perhaps exaggerate people's normal behaviour. Um, whereas in a class, the idea is you can't hide from the instructor and, and one can look around the class and say, so what do you think about that? Fred, and Fred's sitting there and Fred has to answer. Um, in a computer webinar, it's more complex and you tend to find that the, the quieter people just sit quietly um, or, and you get the same people asking questions. So we, we love questions, but it's, it's not, it doesn't have the same sort of interactivity. And I've looked at other people's um, webinars uh, as recordings uh, and frankly, I get as much use out of them as a recording as I would as a quiet student not interacting. Um, but I don't think there's anything in the regulations that even considers the concept that a recorded webinar could be used uh, to count towards classroom time. Uh, that's something that they haven't, haven't really thought of yet. Um, and I don't know what the answer will be. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're asking our students to complete questionnaires after these trial webinars and see if we get some feedback from the students about what they think. I think it's certainly going to change the whole the whole COVID nineteen thing is COVID nineteen thing. Sorry, it's, it's certainly going to change quite a lot of things. Uh, and I, I suspect personally, I think a lot of barriers would be broken down. There'll probably be the law of unintended consequences will raise its head uh, a few months down the line. But you know. I think you're right. Um, it's a genie. Uh, certainly, from the point of view of web based training, it's a genie that once it's out of the bottle, it, it isn't going to go back in again but it's gonna require a fair bit of thought about how it's conducted because the world in lockdown is not the same as the world is gonna be after lockdown. Um, there's timing issues, availability issues, all sorts of things. Um, we, we're we just really sort of feeling our way at the moment. Yeah, well, and, and I guess I guess we all are in, in all sorts of industries, just trying to figure out what's gonna happen. Who knew, I mean, a few weeks ago, who, who knew we'd be here and well, who knew, indeed. Who knew, who knew yeah. we'd be in a month or so's time? Who knew?
Who knew? Indeed. Well, it's great to talk to you, Alex. Nice um, to talk to you. Let me just pop your banner up on the screen. Should anyone want to get in touch with you, we can uh, go onto that website for you. Brilliant. Thank you. And and for for our, for our, hmm? Sorry, carry on. I was going to say for our students, the, there's going to be a, um, a booking sheet for um, webinars coming up on the website very shortly with trials this week. And um, we'll be conducting um, webinars of some sort in the next couple of weeks and continuously through the lockdown. OK, so realistically, the, the, just to just to the entrance requirements for a distance learning HPL theory course is a PP, is it PPL in 100 hours? No, it's a PPL. Um, the regulation says that you must hold a PPL and the interpretation of that is, is different across different states. Um, the, the harshest interpretation is the UK CAA who say uh, you actually physically have to have the license in your hand. Um, and that means that any delays caused by license issue and stuff stop people getting uh, started on the course. Um, however, I, I, although I haven't asked them, I, I would imagine that they're going to be more tolerant of people who have passed the, the various tests for PPL uh, are in a position to apply but haven't got their license processed because the CA has shut up shop and gone home. And in terms of the, so, so somebody signs up for a course, the material is all available digitally these days? Yeah, it's all digital. Um, we, we also have uh, manuals so, and a lot of people like to have the printed manuals which parallel the, the digital course. Uh, but um, it, it, you don't need to have the manuals and probably two thirds of us of our students go through without any printed material at all. It's all on a, a on a, on an app. And and those so those fourteen exams split down, excuse me, split down into different modules. It normally, would take a year to year and a quarter or something. But given given the challenges with the timing of or the lack of availability of uh, classroom time, then the lack of availability of exams um, means that, as you say, I guess EASA and the individual NAAs are going to have to take a view on that. Otherwise, there's going to be an awful lot of uh, well-educated but frustrated people. That is indeed the problem because uh, there's a limit to how much you can hold in your head. And it's all very well saying, well, I'll do the first module, I'll do four subjects. And then, well, I can't take exams, I'll go on to the second module. But then how can you hold the, the material for eight, 14 subjects all in your head at once? Um, so it, it's going to run into um, a, a log jam at some point. And, um, but then we're, we're talking about uh, log jams appearing, you know, four, five, six months. So it all very much depends on how the lockdown eases out and how they start to reintroduce exams. Um, hopefully they're still thinking about it. Yeah, the, the simple exams I've taken, I've managed to hold the stuff in my head for at least I don't know, maybe as much as two and a half days. Yes, I know. That's exactly the problem. I mean, there's, the, the nature of the exam is you have to have an awful lot of material in your head, uh, and it's it's a challenge to do that uh, for for three subjects, four subjects. If you had to do it for fourteen subjects, it would be uh, horrendous. Yeah, horrible. Ugh, makes me shiver just thinking about it. Well, thanks very much for your time. It's Good a luck. Pleasure. Nice to talk to you. Good luck with uh, with everything, really, and um, maybe maybe we'll catch up in a month's time if we're still in the same position and see how things have changed and moved on or not. Thanks very much. We'll speak to you later. Oh, thanks for listening to that. I hope you found some of it useful. If you did, um, could you do me a favour and leave a little review or a thumbs up? Um, click subscribe. Click the bell. Which side is it? Uh, that side. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, whichever side it is, do me a favour. Click the. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked it and if it was useful. And if you'd like to see more, click the, uh, yeah, click, click the subscribe and click the bell for a notification. Thanks very much. Bye.